It had been a long winter and being stuck in the city for many months working, there was a great window of opportunity with the weather. So I got together with my good friend George, originally from Moldova. We took the train from Lee to Settle to begin what would be a, an amazing four day bike packing adventure. So we're coming out of uh, Settle, the little steep climb. So it's about 50 miles from Lee to Settle and the great thing about the train is that it's really cheap uh, considering that it's about 50 miles in distance and uh, it's less than 8 quid and it bypasses all that busy unpleasant trunk road and gets us straight into the countryside of the Yorkshire Dales. So we are just chilling by Ribblehead before we start the uh, off-road section. This is a thing of interest here, look at this, I want to show you this. This is, thank you George. This is a bowl that George made out of coconut. It's a coconut shell. This is George's bowl. George, that's genius. Yeah. You can sell that on eBay for maybe 50 pounds. So here's a train track that comes off the, uh, the viaduct. So George is the kind of person who would uh, rather climb the wall than simply walk through the door. He has an adventurous spirit, he's a free thinker, and he's really great at improvising. Too narrow. Too narrow. Luckily, he don't have panier bags on then. Very narrow bridge. This is George's fault because his handlebars are about two meters wide. So we met at work and uh, became friends. And I have to admit that he's the one that got me into bikepacking. As you can see, it gets quite technical here. So we gotta kind of hike or push our bikes up this uh, section. Oh man, props for even trying. This is uh, this is very gnarly. So this climb that we are trying to make our way up is called Wernside. It's part of the Yorkshire Dales Three Peaks and uh, it's actually the second highest peak. And I've heard of the bike race that happens here every year and it's one hell of a race, a race of attrition. It produces a lot of broken bikes and bodies. You can't really bike much of it to be honest with you, as you can see. Okay, so for the last uh, section, uh, we could obviously push our bikes. This is very steep. So I'd uh, misread the route on my Garmin and we actually climbed higher than we should have actually gone. I missed the gap in the wall a little earlier, so we had to uh, turn around and retrace our steps and find the gap in the wall and get back on route. So we, uh, we uh, missed the uh, top initially, we went further up, but... So as we descended Wernside heading towards the village of Dent, the terrain became really technical in parts, very rocky and technical to the point where we were almost going at a slow jogging pace. So we were passing by some of these towns along the way, the landscape had really opened up, it was desolate, bleak. 
it was absolutely mesmerizing them. This is why this is why they call it God's own country. With all that bumping around, those those tri bars that George's got were vertical. And Actually, handlebar. The handlebar is more like this. So the handlebar turned into the stem. Go like forward. And the levers as well. And, uh, careful not to over talk it. Oh, it's not easy doing this one hand. Okay. On the last downhill section just before reaching Dent, the terrain became really rocky and technical to the point where we were almost going at walking pace. But luckily on our gravel bikes, our tires were just about wide enough to ride over it. Actually, going down is as hard as going up, but uh, but yeah, look, we're in Dent now. It was quite the relief to be back on tarmac roads after the off-road section over Wernside. I mean, it was only seven miles long, but it taken us a good part of the day to traverse it. The only thing left to do now was to ride into the evening into Cumbria and to find a good wild camping spot. Okay, so this is the end of uh, day one on this short tour. Georgia boy sent his tent up and we managed to find this beautiful spot on this ridge. Uh, overlooking this amazing view. Just in the nick of time for sunset. Beautiful night in the late district. We're just making a dinner for tonight. Here we are. Yeah, George is just uh, having a little cramping moment right now. What's up, George? Your leg, your leg. Yeah, yeah, oh my I God. Can. Here we are, anyway, this is, this is dinner for tonight. We have uh, pesto sauce, we have tomato sauce there. We have a drink, we have hobnobs. We have tomatoes on this ridge. What a camp spot. Come on. Yeah, that's not to eat, but look at this. Look at the view. <sighs> See these uh, uprooted trees here. And uh, even though it's uprooted, kind of, like a continuation of the wall. No, 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 on the tree. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Beautiful. It's got a nice. <laughs> it's got a nice middle parting now. This is a philanthropy, George. He's giving the horse a banana. Anybody, look how kind George is. Look how generous he is. Look at it. And he's also giving the banana skin. <laughs> this is worth a million likes. And so the second day was all about the Lake District and even though I've ridden across the Lake District a few times before uh, I wasn't entirely familiar with the area so uh, I managed to pull out a file of a route from the internet uh, put it onto my Garmin it was shared by a bunch of guys who'd ridden it and the route is called the Lakes Grand Tour Even though this route is called the Lakes Grand Tour, you don't see that many lakes to be honest until probably later on. But what you do get is a lot of farm traffic and a lot of quiet idyllic country roads mixed with a lot of off-road. Uh, it really does take you through the back country roads of the Lake District.
the end of the second day here and as you can see from the uh, camera there you can see all that there that's all midges and that is pretty much Scottish Highland level midges in on the side of Lake uh, Windermere he looks like a terrorist but uh but he's got the right good idea terror. for sure hey eh? good terrorist a good terrorist okay right. this is it I gotta turn it off man oh this is getting excruciating ah shit <laughs> Okay, but we had a we had a proper midget problem last night. It really took out the joy of this uh, majestic uh, spot. George, tell us about the midges last night, man. No comment. See the river bleeding out to the promised land Where there ain't no way to run from the blood on your brother's hands Hey, okay, so we got the crossing for the ferry here across the Windermere George, we have to go the long way around, Holmes And if I could stay Conscience clean. I finally put my mind at ease. Of a history. Yeah, the one from Manchester. Uh, we thought we'd we'll get the train for the next 25 miles to Preston and get off that horrible, horrible, busy road. Oh, sorry. After leaving the Lake District area, we found ourselves on the busy trunk road of the A6 heading south. We made it to as far as Lancaster before giving up because of the horrendously busy traffic. So we just decided to get the train to Preston and then ride on to Liverpool from there. So after reaching Liverpool, we followed the River Mersey for about five miles and while camped outside a community centre beside the River Mersey. And the reason we cycled to Liverpool was to set ourselves up for the final epic day of riding the Liverpool to Leeds Canal of almost 130 miles. Here we are, the canal in Liverpool. We're gonna start from here, and then it's 126 miles whew, all the way to Leeds. Judge boy, you ready for this? No. Well, there. That's a long way to go, especially on the canal. I'm gonna get rough in a lot of parts. Do a quick uh, side switch on the canal. Switching back to the other side again.
Thank you. Cheers. It's dead end here because we have to switch over to the other side. Cheers. Just going by a wigan here along the canal. As you ride along the canal for many miles, you can't help but just wonder what a feat of engineering it truly is. As you ride under bridges and even sometimes over them along the canal and pass rising and descending locks and to think that I'm riding on a strip of what is a vast man-made waterway network throughout the country is truly amazing. diversion because uh, I'm not going to be able to go through this part of it, the most, one of the most interesting parts. Hey George! Park whatever. Oops, jeez. You alright? Okay, one thing I love about the uh, the uh, canal path is that it takes you past these, some of these old industrial derelict buildings. So this is pretty cool what you can find when you just come off the canal path a little. I mean, it's just over there, the canal path, and uh, like little huts, little yurts. Not a bad spot to camp in, actually. <laughs> so George has decided to switch modes of transport. This is not even a hydraulic brake, look. It's a cable. I'm too tired to cycle. It's about the hundred and umpteenth bridge. In Burnley, the canal goes through a tunnel, so we have to go come off path a bit and then join it, rejoin it somewhere about half a mile away from here, maybe a mile. So at this point, we'd covered about half the distance of the Liverpool to Leeds Canal. It was getting late into the day and the evening was setting in as our shadows were getting longer. And if we were to do the entire length, then we would see a good part of it into the night. Because George is not one for big distances on a bike, I just thought it would be fair to give him the option if he wanted to ride the last third of this distance into the night. Okay, so it's been a long day already. We're just feeling up. Um, it looks like we're gonna do the last 45 odd miles into the night. We've got a slow leak, so I think every 20 minutes, half an hour, we gotta do this. But you can see it's getting dark here now. Again, George is just pumping up his recurring slow puncture, but he's also pumping it by the the most distinctive bridge on the entire route that leads in Liverpool Canal. The bridge on top of the bridge. Awesome. The 
booty's out. Get close to speak. We're cycling along the canal, but uh, we're just gonna pull up to this uh, canal boat party for a little while. Life is good. <laughs> got halloumi on the grill. Man, God bless you guys. Yeah, it's refreshing. Honestly, what's your name? Charlie. Charlie, God bless you, Charlie. I don't drink though, mate. No, thank you so much. Uh, my uh, grilled halloumi. It is grilled, it's a little bit charcoal -y. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> but God bless you. Pesto pasta. Uh, salad. George, gr grilled halloumi. Come on, turn your camera on. <laughs> Canal boat tour as well. This is, uh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, this is Oh, wow. Ah, oh, look at that, man. This is. <laughs> man, this is. <laughs> This is crushedy, man. Yeah, yeah. I'll turn on the lights in the See, man, how much space is here. Wow, wow. This is this is this is how you travel in style, man. Mm. It's the heating system. Look at this. Yeah. I guess you put I guess you put coal in that, right? No, no. Lugs heats up the whole boat. Honestly, have that on for twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. Heats up the whole boat. Heating system. It goes through. So, not wanting George to feel left out, uh, I thought I'd give my tires a quick little pump as well. I mean, it had been a very long and bumpy ride and as we were passing by the grandest building along the entire canal, which is Salt Mill, we were within the closing miles of finishing this ride and reaching Leeds. What a cow, there's a... There's a cow on the canal. A few moments later, we finally arrived. There's Kendall House and that is the end of the Leeds, or should I say Liverpool to Leeds Canal. Well done. Alright, <laughs> what an adventure. What the experience. The experience. Okay, should we call the taxi home now? Yeah. Okay. There we go, right done. <laughs>